know you'd like to make all the rounds, Roy, but it's getting pretty late. We'd better get back to the show. Well, this is the last one, Bob, I promise. Till next year. Hi, you kids. It really is swell getting a chance to be here this year and meet you all in person and say howdy to you. And I brought my horse, Trigger, along, and I know he's tickled to death to come back and say hello to you. You glad to be here, Trigger? Huh? throwing the little girls a kiss. Will you throw them a kiss out there? <laughs> How about you giving me a kiss? <laughs> well, kids, I'm going to get on Trigger and have him do a little dance for you. I see you. You know, some of these days I'm going to come back here and run off with you. Oh, would you? I sure would. Say, you're looking better, partner. You still going to ride those buck and broncs for me? You bet. Well, boy, I'm saving the best one to show for you. Hello there. What's your name? This is Rosita. Her parents sent her here from Mexico City for treatment. I think she's a little homesick. Rosita? Well, I think I've got just a cure for homesickness. All right, fellas. I wish the man who endowed this ward could be here to see this. Well, you mean Sam Bennett? He was a great performer. Seems to me I've heard you're a pretty good performer yourself. Oh, thanks, but there'll never be another one like him. He was a champion in and out of the arena. I need the money awful bad, or I wouldn't ask you for it. Well, what makes you think I'd let you have $500 or even $100? I made plenty for you, Jim, and your brother. In my day. You said it in your day, and that's a long time past. If you'd have stayed away from booze and gambling and hell out of the money you made for yourself, you wouldn't look the way you do. Sorry, Bennett, we don't run an organization for charity. I don't want charity, Jim, uh, Mr. Calvert. But I just thought I know this business so well that there ought to be something around here I could do to pay the money back, if you let me have it. We haven't got any place around here for has-beens. You can get a hand out of the cook wagon if you're hungry. Hey, Bill Kirk won't be able to drive the truck wagon race. He was just thrown and broke an arm. Now what? Well, we just have to get somebody else, that's all. You might drive it yourself. Not me. There's easier ways of committing suicide than that. Wait a minute. Hey, Sam. We need a driver for the truck wagon race. You used to drive it when you were younger. Think you can handle it again? Why... You wanted $500. It's a $500 purse if you win. Then I'll win. And thanks for the chance. You better go see about your team. You go with them. Jim, he's too old for that kind of a team. He may get hurt. I don't care what he gets as long as it's not $500 of my money. But I'll pay the doctor bills. The wagon's ready, Roy. You're up next. Okay, saddle him up for me, will you, Bill? <laughs> racing against you? That old fellow over there? Take another look. Sam Bennett. It can't be. Hard to believe that guy was ever a champ, huh? I was looking at a picture of him this morning. What a change. I wonder why he's doing this. Handling that kind of stuff's no job for an old man. He probably wants to hear the yell of a crowd again. Show business in your blood's about the most incurable ailment there is, they tell me. I'm going over and wish him luck. We understand each other. Now, don't let me down, baby. Mr. Bennett? That's right. I'm Roy Rogers. Oh, I heard of you. I'm driving against you in the race today. I want you to know I'm mighty proud to be working on the same program with you. Thanks. We ought to put on a real race out there, you and I. If I'm lucky enough to win, it'll be because I've got a better team, not because I'm a better driver. You ain't won yet. I feel the same way about it. Good luck, Mr. Bennett. Driving number four wagon on the outside will be Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys and star of the Calvert Brothers Rodeo Show. <laughs> Driving wagon number 
two on the inside will be that former great rodeo star in his own right, Sam Bennett. <laughs> the teams will race out of the arena to a flag stop one mile away and back to the finish line in front of the grandstand. Are you ready? Shaken up a bit, Roy. Take him to my tent and get a doctor. So that's why he took the chance. Better? Yeah, he's all right. The doc just took a look at him. Said he was lucky to be alive. The doc ought to take a look at that wagon they gave him to drive, and he'd know how lucky he was. Why, what do you mean? I don't think that thing had ever seen any grease. The harness was so old, it was falling apart. Why, those dirty crooks. No wonder they gave him a chance at the purse. Yeah. You boys still feel like you want to be your own bosses? Sure. Well, heck yes, Roy. That's why we bought the ranch. What we've been saving our money for to put stock on it. Why? Good, because we're quitting this outfit today, right now. You mean that? I sure do. Well, gosh, we haven't got enough money yet, have we? Maybe not, but we'll get by on a little less than we need rather than to be tied up with a bunch of crooks. I feel the same way about that myself. You said it, and the sooner the quicker. You know what? I think the smell of them two Calvert brothers is what's been ruining my stomach. Let's go tell them we quit. I'll tell them for all of us. The rest of you boys get packed up and going out to the ranch. Pat and I'll take a look at that stock we want in Bear Valley, and we'll see you later. Uh, you might start fixing things up a little. All right, and say, Roy, don't you think we ought to hang around a bit just in case of trouble? You know, they're going to howl, and plenty, too. I might do a little howling myself. Feeling better? I guess so. I'm sorry about the way the race turned out today, Mr. Bennett. Well, it teaches me not to drive for the Calvert brothers or against strangers without checking my equipment more carefully. I had nothing to do with the equipment, whether you believe it or not. My opinion of the Calvert brothers is the same as yours. I'm leaving them. Don't make any difference to me what you do. Wait a minute. Here's the rest of your stuff. That's a mighty cute little girl you got there. Oh, so you read other people's mail, too. Believe me, Mr. Bennett, I'm on your side. How'd you expect to entertain your daughter on her vacation if you broke your neck out there today? I don't know. But if she finds out about me, I'd just assume it was broken. Find out what? You read the telegram. 
Do I look like a ranch owner? Do I look like a big shot? The last time she saw me, I was a champ. You still look like one to me. You got a raw deal out there today, and I'd like to do something to, to make up for it. There's nothing you can do. Yes, there is. You've been telling your daughter you have a ranch, haven't you? Yeah. Well, mister, you've got one as long as she's here. What? We'll talk about it later. You wait here for me. I'm going to go kiss the Calvert brothers goodbye, and I don't think they're going to like it. Howdy, boy. How's it look, Roy? Sure looks well, Tim. Well, we've been working ever since we got here. Those wild horses got here, and boy, do they look good. Well, there'll be more here in a day or so. Sam, why don't you ride on up the house with Pat? Are you sure you want to go through with this? I'll see you in a few minutes. Go on. What's Sam doing out here? It's a long story, boys, but he's sort of our guest. Well, that wasn't so long. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a little more to it than that. You see, he's in a jam, and I knew you boys wouldn't mind helping out an old-timer, so... I told him as long as his daughter was only going to be here for a few days, that his daughter. Say, what is it? What goes on? Well, what I'm trying to tell you is that she thinks he owns a ranch and she's coming to visit him on it. Well, he doesn't own one, so I told him he could sort of use this one. You mean we've got to make out like our ranch belongs to him? Well, only for the weekend. Listen, fellas, he's in an awful jam. Think how you'd feel if it was your daughter and you'd told her you was a big shot. I don't even know how I'd feel if I had a daughter, let alone tell her I was a big shot. Look, Roy... I thought we wasn't going to allow women on this ranch. She's no woman, Bob. She's a little girl. Well, we've got other things to do besides running a nursery, too. Yeah, I agree with Bob. But I'll change my vote on one condition. You're the nursemaid, and you keep her out of the way. Okay, how do you boys feel about it? Well, I don't right, know, Lord. Lord. That's swell. I'm sure glad you approved because the train gets in this afternoon. A mama doll. Well, that's funny. Maybe she fell off the train. Well, I wonder where Dad is. You sure he knows you're coming? Well, certainly. Maybe he sent those men to meet us. I'll go ask them. Hey, you asked the skinny one. I saw the other one first. I'm going to ask these ladies if they've seen it. I, I beg, beg your pardon. <laughs> ladies first. Well, I was expecting my father to meet us. Maybe you know him. Sam Bennett? Oh, sure. We're looking for his daughter. <laughs> you mean you're Sue? Why, yes. Did he send you to meet us? No, uh, I mean, yes, only... Only what? Is there something wrong? Certainly not. Everything's fine. Say, you're a little big for your age, aren't you? You're kind of young for your size, ain't you? He has to eat those for his teeth. <laughs> what you got behind your back? Another one? Oh, oh, no, no. I, I, I mean, I, I ain't got nothing behind my back. Are you sure it's his teeth that are weak? You had to open your big mouth. <laughs> Shall we go? Help me in, Junior. Dad! Dad! Hello, Sue. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I've waited a long time for this, honey. Well, it's just like I dreamed it would be. You, the ranch, the country, everything. See, that's what I was trying to tell you. Boy, she sure got grown-up looks for a little kid. Some kid is right. And I'm the guy that wanted Roy to be the nurse. <laughs> Did you want to see Dad about anything important? Nothing that can't wait. Sure is nice sitting out here in the open air. Alone, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, I guess I'll... Oh, but I'd be very happy to have your company. I want to hear all about the ranch. I just love to talk about the ranch. Uh oh, the company. You just sit still. Well, good evening, Miss Bennett. Good evening. I was just passing by and I saw you sitting there. <clears throat> Pardon me, Mr. Bennett. I thought you had already gone in. Do you want to see me about something? No, no sir. Just passing by. Well, don't let us stop you. Good night. Yes, sir. Good night, Miss Bennett. Good night. That was a mean trick. Don't think I approve of it. You could have stopped it by saying one word. I would have said that one word, too. If I hadn't wanted to hear about the ranch. Well, we can talk about the ranch in the daylight. How would you like to hear a song instead? Well, I... That's swell. I'll get my orchestra. Yes, Father. Be right back. Bells are ringing, I 
hear sweet voices singing as evening shadows fall. Tis then my heart grows fonder as through the flowers I wander with thoughts so true, dear. Always of you, dear Moonlight and roses Bring wonderful memories of you My heart reposes In beautiful thoughts so true June light discloses Love's olden dreams sparkling anew Moonlight and roses Bring memories of you Very, very nice, Mr. Bennett. <laughs> You're disturbing the livestock. That was triggered. Just scolding me, I guess. You better not go any closer. Them horses may start pounding off again. This feed ought to dry out pretty fast. Yeah, if it don't sprout first. Speaking of sprouts, look what's coming up. Hi, boys. Okay. It's like you had a little fire. We wasn't smudging no orange grove. Well, that's too bad. It do much damage? Very little. You'll be sorry to hear. What do you want? Oh, nothing in particular. The show is booked in town next week. I came out ahead to get things lined up. Being so close, I thought I'd drop out and see how you're getting along. Oh, we're getting along fine. Why don't you follow suit and get along? Still want to run your own show, eh? Take a look around. What do you think? Well, I think you win. It looks pretty good. Rogers, no use you and I squabbling like a couple of schoolboys. I'll admit my show is better with you in it. I'm willing to make it worth your while. I'll tell you what I'll do. You come back and I'll cut you in 50-50. We'll split the profits right up the middle. What do you say? I'm sorry. Well, that's a pretty good offer. We'd be partners. That's just it. I don't think we'd make good partners. Oh, I'm sorry to feel that way about it. Be a shame for you boys to lose this nice setup. Our plans don't include losing it. Maybe you haven't planned far enough in the future. The Calvert brothers control the whole rodeo circuit. What are you going to do if you find yourself with a show and no place to play it? Nobody to look at it. We'll take our chances on that. Yeah, I see. It's a very nice setup. I forgot to tell you, Sam Bennett's here. Too bad you have to leave. Maybe you'd like to say hello to Sam. Morning. Hi. Roy, who was that? Just some guy trying to sell us a bill of goods. Business? Why didn't he stop by and see Dad? He knew your father wouldn't be interested in what he had to sell. Oh. Roy, would you mind coming up to the house for a few minutes? Dad and I have some questions about the ranch. Sure. Who wants to teach me to ride? I, I do. do. Oh, well, you're both so cute, I'll let you both teach me. I'm beginning to find out why you've got that worry wrinkle. She always was an inquisitive brat. 
You shouldn't bother Roy like this. He's got other things to think of. Now, it won't take long. And besides, after finding out that you have no insurance, I'm prepared for anything. Better look at all the books first. Books? Well, certainly your accounts. Accounts? Oh, oh accounts. Well, we don't exactly keep accounts. But you must. How do you keep track of your bills? We just sort of pay them when they come in and forget about them, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. But that's absurd. Why, well, this ranch has been going a long time. It's like any other business. You have to run it in a business-like way. Now, you must have some sort of records. Well, I'd be glad to go into it with you, but it's, it's kind of complicated. You might not be able to understand the details of it. The firm I work for in New York has a monthly turnover of one half million dollars. And I keep the books. Ouch. Well, whatever we make, we just put it in a bank, and when we need money, we just take it out again. Go on. Well, then at the end of the year, we see if there's anything left. Well, if there's anything left, it's swell. <laughs> Which there seldom is, I gather. Oh, Sue, what do you want to bother with us for now? You're supposed to be on a vacation. Why don't you get out in the air and take a little ride? Yeah, I've got a horse all settled up for you. You'll like him. Besides, it's a shame to waste a beautiful day like this indoors. I guess you're right. There's no point in my talking bookkeeping if you know nothing about it, is there? We just use different systems. Maybe someday I'll learn yours. Or I'll learn yours, Mr. Rogers. I'll be ready in a minute. Get him going fast when it comes through. You better stay right here. I want to see the excitement. This is no game. You do as I say.
didn't you stay where I told you to? Because I'm stupid. But I rather resent your tone, considering your position. My position right now is better than yours. I've got a horse to ride home on. You wouldn't dare. You get my horse at once, and that's an order. Well, I'll try. But I might not be able to find him when he asks like that. He's pretty wild. I might even get lost myself. Wait a minute. Will you find him for me, please? That'll do it. Put him back in the corral. It's a wonder they didn't crack their hooves clean through making them run across rocks like that. If we'd have caught them bandits, I'd make them run back that canyon barefoot. That wouldn't hurt Calvert any. He's no tender. Oh, you think it was his idea? Hey, why don't we go into town and take him apart? I'll punch him so full of holes you can play him like a flute. We haven't any proof. It's just my hunch. Oh, it's too bad Miss Bennett had to spoil it. Just like a dame, though. Show up when you don't want her. I think you ought to tell her. The trouble with you is you don't know how to handle women. Oh, but he does, Pat. No, he doesn't. He's too polite. Oh, I, I was just saying, that, Roy, you ought to be more polite. Roy, why didn't you tell me last night that you and Dad were partners? Partners? Now, don't try to pretend. Dad told me all about it. Oh. Yes, you see, he had to. I had a few changes in mind after last night. So Dad finally broke down and told me why they couldn't be made. Imagine trying to fire your father's partner. You know, he said you were so valuable, he had to make you a partner. But that you didn't want to accept. I think you're too modest. But I'd like to have a copy of the partnership papers to keep just in case something should happen. We haven't any papers. It's just a gentleman's agreement. Nothing in writing? Well, suppose something should happen to Dad. How could you prove your share? Well, I... I think for your own protection, you ought to have it in writing. Well, if you think so... I certainly do. I'll have Hildegard draw up a paper. Something informal between friends. I tried to talk her out of it. Well, let her do it. She gets a kick out of helping you. It doesn't hurt anything. Besides, we can tear it up when she goes home. Here you are. Sorry to keep you waiting. Nice and formal little thing. Read it. To whom it may concern, whereas between the party of the first part and the party of the second part, to be known hereafter by the above and aforementioned titles. Well, it sounds legal enough. Where do I sign? Oh, well, you don't sign yet. We have to go into town and have it notarized. Into town? Well, certainly. Otherwise, it's not valid. You have no objections, have you, Roy? Oh, no, ma'am. The party of the second part is definitely in favor of going to town with you. And the party of the first part. Big doings going on in town right now. Fiesta and everything. We'll have fun. There, now that was painless, wasn't it? Didn't hurt a bit. <laughs> I'll be getting back to the ranch. Don't you want to watch, Dad? No, oh, this is old stuff to your dad. Well, do you want me to go with you? No, stay and enjoy yourself. Shall we go? Sure. All right. Like the Star Club with tamales.
tiene cielito lindo junto a la boca No se lo desa nadie al cielito lindo que a mí me toca In Mexico, where the breezes blow, there I'm bound to go, senorita. Here is the love I bring you, cielito lindo, my own amorita. Ay, 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 let's sing a love song, for when our hearts sing together, cielito lindo, love comes along. Hi, Rogers. Giving my offer any more consideration? I didn't need any more. He's a very stubborn fella. Miss Gray, Miss Bennett, Mr. Calvin. Oh, Sam's daughter. In that case, I guess you'll be coming out to see the show. Your father was a great performer in his day, Miss Bennett. The best of them all. Thank you. Very happy to have met you. I still want that ranch, Rogers. Does he want to buy the ranch? I guess so, but I... I mean, we don't want to sell it, especially to him. Oh, I see. Uh, I have some shopping to do. Wait for me here. Okay. Come on, Roy. Let's join the boys. All right. Mr. Calvert! Oh, Mr. Calvert! <laughs> I understand that you're interested in buying my father's ranch. I'd like to hear more about it. Your father's ranch? Well, yes, his and Roy's. They're partners, you know. Well, no, I didn't know. Well, then you haven't talked with Dad. Look here, are you sure about this? Well, of course I'm sure. I know my own father's ranch. Look, does this convince you? I'd like to talk to your father. Well, I think you better talk to me. I'm afraid that Roy has too much influence with him, and you two don't seem to be on the best of terms. You'll see here that I have power of attorney. I think maybe we can get together. Hello, honey. Have a good time yesterday? You'll find out. What's this? This is the check. I sold your half of the ranch to Jim Calvert. And that's a timetable on which you're going to select a train that will take us home. Oh, Sue, you shouldn't have. But I thought you'd be happy. You said that... I know I did, but... And to Jim Calvert. Of all people. You have to take it back. Oh, but, Dad, I don't think he will. He's got to. Oh, Sam, I want you to take a look at some stuff. Oh, I thought I heard Sam's voice in here. Where is he? He just went out. He's very much upset. Upset? Yes, I might as well tell you. I used the power of attorney that Dad gave me, and I sold his half of the ranch to Jim Calvert. You did what? Well, that's about as clearly as I can state it. Well, don't you think you were going a little too far? Why, it was his to sell, wasn't it? Not without my consent. Maybe I don't want Calvert as a partner. Well, I can't see that Dad did very well with you as a partner. Maybe he was doing a little better than you think. Hey, what's all the excitement? Where's your dad going, coyote hunting? What do you mean? What do I mean? Why, he just ran out of here strapping on the biggest portable cannon I ever saw in all my life. And then he jumped on a horse and rode out of the yard like someone was after him. Well, where was he going? He said he was going to make Jim Calvert take his check back. Well, if he gets hurt, you can thank me for dreaming up such a crazy idea in the first place. And you for waking us up. Gosh, it took me four hours to make this one, and I gotta make 20 of them before we go out on the road. I'll be rolling hooks the rest of my life. I'm not a kidding you. Bennett. You see, I checked very carefully, and it's all nice and legal. But I tell you... Let me tell you. Your daughter's a smart businesswoman. She knew I was anxious to have any part of that branch, and she made me pay a nice price for it. But she couldn't sell it here. I don't own a foot of it. The law says differently. You and Rogers signed a partnership agreement. 
I don't care what the law says. You're giving me back that bill of sale. You're giving it back, or you're a dead man. You're asking for trouble, Bennett. I'm asking for that bill of sale, quick. Don't move your hands. Okay, but it's in that drawer. I'll get it. Throw that gun back inside, Calvert. All right, Rogers. Come on inside. Have a cigar. No, oh, thanks. I'm not going to argue the legality of this thing, Calvert. But you know that ranch isn't big enough for both of us. Well, I'm very happy with our partnership, of course. If you're not happy to find out I've got a chronic case of rattlesnakes, I should say not. What's your proposition? I'll buy your half of the ranch. If, of course. What's the if? If you'll sign an agreement to stick with the rodeo and forget this idea of a show of your own. And end up working for this tin horn gambling outfit the rest of my life? Oh, no, just until you're too old to perform. Now, think it over. If you decide to accept, I'd like to have you back for this afternoon's chuck wagon race. Oh, wait a minute. I got another idea. You call this a tin horn gambling outfit. Let's see what kind of a gambler you are. Make it a little plainer. Your chuck wagon's against mine. My half of the ranch against yours. The winner owns it all. Is that clear enough? Mister, you've got yourself a bet. That's one thing she taught us anyway. Get it in writing. There you are. Now it's understood. Two wagons apiece. Whoever wins gets it. Start and finish here. Right. Hey, Rogers. What's all this talk I hear about a bet? Yeah, we've got a big one on. Well, I'm out to win, but I'll drive straight. Thanks. I'm taking this wagon. Jim's orders. Do I drive the second? You don't drive any today. Okay, Bob. Okay. I wonder where Dad is. He said he'd watch it from up the road someplace. Ladies and gentlemen, the race is about ready to begin. Are the contestants on the wagons all set to go? All right, folks, we're about to give the signal.
must have been an accident. There are only three wagons left in the race now. Roy is trading Fred and Bill. take any chances. Keep your fingers crossed. What does it say? Oh, I listen to this. This is to notify you that your rodeo is booked solidly throughout the circuit for the coming season. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> What's the matter? Don't mind me. I always ball at a happy ending. That's awful good news for you, Roy. It's good news for all of us. By the way, I'd like to get your signature on this. contract for his services as foreman of the ranch. We'll need him when we go out on the road with the show this summer. I think I'm going to ball some more. Say, if you're going to do that, you're going to need a bigger handkerchief. <laughs> what do you see if we we'll go out and tell the boys about it? They're out rounding up some stuff. All right. What are you crying about? It's a happy ending for me, too, isn't it? I'm glad for you, Pat. And you're just gonna show it by shaking hands? Come here. Hey, wait a minute. Now, don't kiss me. I'm dynamite. I'm telling you. Maybe for a city fella, but for a top hand, my kisses are slow murder. There's a rainbow over the rain, and the skies are blue again. The rolling thunder spills in the far-off hills. There's 
the rainbow, over the rain. Hear the cowboys, yippee-i-o, while the doggies mill and blow. The sun is riding high in the prairie sky, there's a rainbow over the rain. I've been told there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow's lane. But I found that trail, just a magic veil that's born in the sun and rain. It's a grand and glorious day, and the clouds have rolled away. The fading thunder stills in the far-off hills. There's a rainbow over the rain. There's a rainbow for.